Hello. Okay, I think what I'd like to do now is um, there was a question with glazing uh, a unifying wash on all of the white petals. Um, and this is for Carol because I think her painting is about in this stage. And the best thing I could tell you for right now, if you want, just leave the petals alone, paint in your water, and then see where that takes you because sometimes with the white, the white of the paper against the white of the um, petals, you're getting, you're going to get uh, your petals a little too dark. And I've made that mistake quite often. Um, this one it does have the water in it. So, and the water's not as dark as, um, as some of the other um, steps that I had. So, Let's talk about, okay, so to answer Carol's question about a unifying wash, okay, now I'm looking at my photo reference and I see a lot of warm tones. Now, if you want, you could, you could do a unifying wash, um, but I would be a little more selective about where I, uh, you know, did the, the, the wash at or the glaze. Now, if you want, you could take a little bit of a warm tone here, okay? And I always start with that front pedal. Um, I always regret starting with that front pedal because sometimes it's better to start with some of these back here uh, while you get warmed up. But, um, okay, so here I am. I'm following the pattern of the petals, okay, right there. Now, if you like... Um, you can come in and just kind of tap, tap another, uh, another color right over the shadows that um, that uh, you have previously painted on to the white petals. Now, I'm just wondering if, you know, we perhaps might not want to get, um, you know, glazing too many of them too soon because you, it's really tricky. You want to keep the white of the paper and probably not that tricky for some artists, but for me it, it, it's a little tricky because I tend to paint and then just keep going and going. Now that's not so bad, so I have a little bit of a, a movement right there. And I think also Carol had asked, how do I get my shadows even darker? Um, and this is this is a good way you can you can do a wet into wet you can take your petal okay and find the movement of the petal like for instance this big guy back here and um, you can drop in a shape on top of the shape okay and it's my my brush is wet my brush is wet right there and you know you can because it every time I looked at these petals I thought I saw a, another um, shape within a shape within a shape and having a variety of colors within the white petals is really fun because it makes it a little bit more interesting not so flat um, so so if you want to go along and paint in your warm tones there we go warm tones and this done and you know and maybe not go crazy and try and fix make all the petals work uh, right away it's it's one of those things that you have to be patient with until um, until the surrounding shapes are, are put in um, and I know you want you want it all to look great but by, by the time you get to the water but um, you know I've painted this like a gazillion times and uh, I'm telling you I just I just think that leaving these guys alone for a little bit is probably your best bet but moving on so here is another you know so the same the same um, glaze that I put here it's it's uh, I'm using I'm using transparent yellow and a little uh, Windsor or permanent rose and I I'll, and I just keep adding a lot of water to it just to keep it um, you know just barely uh, a tint in there but because um, there's already paint on here and I'm going to be you know once you put a unifying glaze on it actually does 
uh, take on a, uh, a darker value. Okay, so um, also what I thought would be fun was to talk a little bit more about um, the water. Since, since I really do think before you work uh, in the petals too much more, or even work the petals. Um, let's just let's just look at the water first, okay? So let's go back here. And um, these, of course, these haven't been done except for a few shapes here. Um, and I'm going to grab my blue. Okay. Um, you know, I the photo reference. It, you know, the water is pretty much green. Um, and I was having a hard time, um, uh, finding, you know, my own style in this piece. And my husband uh, came by my studio while I was doing it. He goes, that's not you. Why don't you go dark? You should go really, really dark with the, with the water. And so I did listen to him and I thought, you know, he's probably right. I, I do like. I do like that those deep, rich, dark colors. So, so you can see here. I tried to go grayish green with it, and the the, the one back here. Um, but I think also that this this piece can be a whole lot more fun than we um, than it is in the video. You know, uh, make it a little bit more your own and. What I'm going to do is bring the blue on top of uh, some of this lily right here. Okay, and you can see that. Yay. And I'm going to bring it up, 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 and come down and bring it up. Now, see how I have my painting sideways so the pigment will just run down this way. Now, um, you know how water, you know, the water, it's either if, if there's a, a ripple or a little bit of wind or, you know, some movement in the water. You can do that here, even though the water in the uh, photograph is really still. Um, I think it makes for a more interesting piece, adding a little bit of um, action right here. And while it's wet, and you're just going to go ahead, you can drop in your darker colors if you like. You can just knock that in and have some fun with this. This is a good exercise because it'll distract you from this for, for a little bit. So, um, you know, take, take your time, play with the water, have some fun with it, and, um, and know that this is how we start to get our deeper, darker colors in here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lay some blue right here up to up to this uh, lily right here and this is going to anchor it nicely okay and coming back to my phthalo blue um, and this is kind of fun too because it's not a wet into wet it's just shapes on top of shapes so um, you know you don't have to rush through it you can kind of play with this a little bit and just keep moving it about and make it your own. This is this is not your chance to make this your own. If you want to go and and um, go crazy and add a whole lot more ripples, feel free to do so. You know, because it's not a really big canvas and it's not going to be that daunting of a task to um, play with the water a little bit. Um, one of my finished pieces in the back here when I painted the background, um, I actually did have a lot of movement, you know, to, to bring it back because I thought it looked a little too flat the way um, the reference photo was um, guiding me through this. So uh, let's see, I'm going to add a little bit more pigment right there. That's fun, right? Look how deep and dark that is. I like that. And then come on over here, knock that in. Knock that in. Ooh, okay. Um, yeah, so I guess when I um, made the steps for this demo, I just really wanted to stick to the reference photo. But, um, you know, because without 
you know, with a video and a reference photo and, you know, the people at home that want to just paint along with the video that don't take this class, um, it might be a little confusing. It's like, where, where is she seeing this information? Um, so look, I'm just going to do this and drop that in. And you can see it's starting to take on a really fun fun shape down here and fun movement within the water. So, um, yeah, so why, so for those of you that um, are having trouble with the white petals, if you are, and if you're not, that's awesome. Um, but if you are having like, um, you know, trouble gauging your, your values in here, just do this first because um, that'll hold everything into place and it'll be good. Okay, so there it goes, there it goes. And just keep your brush, turn it, and this is good, this is good um, control with um, learning, you know, how, how to use your brush to the best of its ability. And turn it, and here we go. Okay. And yeah, so that's um, that's pretty good. Um, so I did do another video on on tips on how to lift some of this pigment, and I was playing around with that uh, eraser thing, and I don't know if I want to post it or not because I just don't know if that that uh, Mr. Magic Eraser, it's a, it has, uh, it's like a sponge that you clean your walls with. And I don't know the results of what's gonna happen later on down the line because there's a little bit of bleach in it and is that gonna affect the um, paper? Is that gonna affect the, um, you know, the, the lifespan of the painting? So I don't wanna be the one to demo that and put that up on YouTube. Um, so I think I will leave it up to your discretion to play with it and try it out. Um, so here we go. One more. Right there. So that, um, that pretty much does it. So water, unifying glaze, which is one of the questions from uh, Carol. And um, you know, the choice is yours. If you want, if you feel that you need to do that, but I, I, I just hope that, um, you, you know, you wait and then we can revisit this like once your water's put in, um, because I think it might get a little too dark and too muddy looking. Um, I, God knows I've had that happen to me. Um, cause look, if, if I put a unifying glaze over this whole thing, I just think you're, we're going to lose some of that glow. Um, maybe wait until the end and then we can create uh, we can create areas that you can put a unifying glaze on and then find ways of creating the glow that comes you know from within because you don't want it to get too dark okay so that's it for me for now and I'm gonna post this and boy it's been it's only Monday so um, we've got a couple more days, and I hope you guys um, keep posting your, your um, paintings as you're progressing, and uh, it'll be fun to see your work and really enjoying seeing all of your images. So thank you for participating. Okay, there we go. Okay.
Mm. Shit. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of a demo. And 